Hello, my soccer universe. Uh, well, I'm saving the review videos where I have a lot to say other than the games for last. But to be honest, in my Southeastern Europe <laughs> review, mainly Serie A, um, it will be rather short because, yeah, wearing Lazio, we'll see in a sec. Um, let's go right to it. We have only four results. And that to me is a travesty. Um, the round was about to be, the many games on Sunday and all those postponed games uh, were about to play to be we played behind closed doors. However, and I don't know if it is only because of Juventus Inter, but seemingly Juve was really pushing to have the game played on Monday when the restriction of whether the game is to be played behind closed doors and also was about to be partially lifted because of the coronavirus. Inter would not have one, didn't want to have any part of that. And it's the typical thing. I mean, uh, that Juve can suggest this uh, already shows you the power of Juve, which is considerable. Uh, but then on the other side, uh, it also... Inter's non-compliance because they have a perceived advantage uh, if the game is played behind closed doors. Understandable, but Inter won't have anything of that. Uh, that it would be a really nice spectacle that this game that is broadcast all over the world is only a spectacle if there are people there, not if this is empty. So I actually understand TV if they would have pushed to remove that date because this is the marquee matchup of the season. Although none of these might become champions, but this is the marquee matchup of the season and the first game was already exhilarating and great. So... And then you move the entire round Seemingly now on May 13th, towards the end of the season. How often do you want to postpone now? I mean, you don't know how the coronavirus is developing. Get the games done! And move it to Monday if you can get at least a partial opening of the stadiums or whatever. That's what I don't get. The league should have said, yeah, let's... whatever. It's a real mess. And Inter is now paying for it because their run-in is... Now, as it stands, if these are the dates that we'll get, their run-in is now Juventus away, Napoli at home, Atalanta at home. That's a great run-in. Uh, it is going to struggle with that one, most likely. Let's go go, go, go to the games. I want to keep this video rather short, to be honest. Uh, already three minutes. Um, first game was Lazio against Bologna. And if Bologna actually was a tricky opponent. I don't understand those away jerseys that they have. Um, because they have been playing all right-ish and Lazio needed some... Uh, I mean, they had an early chance, but they needed a little bit of twisting on them. Luis Alberto in the 18th gives Lazio the lead, but right thereafter... A huge chance for Bologna, alone ahead of Strakosha. I think it was Orsolini. Uh, Strakosha just makes the wall, ball goes off. And right from the uh, return, Korea makes it 2-0. So within less than three minutes, Lazio gets a commanding lead. But Lazio is not commanding the game as you would expect. And actually, Bologna was well in it and had two goals in the second half. Rightly, I have to say, but they had two goals disallowed that really would have sent this game into a tailspin. But as it stands, Lazio hangs on to a 2-0 win and is the big benefactor from all this scheduling mess because Lazio keeps on winning and as we'll see, they're not first in the table. Uh, Napoli played against Torino, got a rather convincing win. Uh, Manolas early, early on, and Di Lorenzo, after Mertens' assist, finally makes it 2-0. There were many chances. Yes, Torino was not without, but uh, it was definitely more nah. Napoli, who continued a good run. Um, Edera gets a late goal for Torino. The result, <laughs> probably, of the um, Sunday was Atalanta's 7-2 mauling of Lecce. They were 2-0 up. Lecce came back to make it 2-2 uh, through Saponara and Donati in the 39th, and it was 2-2 at the half. And then Atalanta does what Atalanta does. Ilicic 
quickly gets one, Duban Zapata, two goals, Muriel um, gets a late one, and then Malinowski. I mean, with it, by the 60th, this was 5-2, then they cut it a little bit back, but when Atalanta brings on players, uh, you never know, they want to also be in that, and so Malinowski and Muriel come on, both make, make the goals, and another seven-goal game by Atalanta. Uh, seven goals were also scored but by two teams, not only by one, uh, in Cagliari, where um, João Pedro gave Cagliari a lead that Kalinic quickly equalized for Roma, uh, and Kalinic actually makes uh, it 2-1 before the half as well. Um, when Kleivert made it 3-1, you thought the game is done, does it? No, Pereiro pulls one back, um, and it uh, was 2-3, quite an exciting game, even though Mkhitaryan makes it then 4-2, Joao Pedro pulls one back, it's a 3-4, vital win for Roma, um, yeah, it's, what can I say for Cagliari, they keep dropping, ever since I have the jersey, they keep dropping, I'm sorry Cagliari, you had a really great start of the season, I, I was hoping this would be a sustained run, and then everything else was uh, postponed, so we have now on the table, and it's a super uneven table, which I always hate, especially in this, two games behind, Lazio, Two points ahead of Juventus, but Juventus with a game in hand, but that's against Inter. So uh, you never know. Atalanta, of course, is also storming up, uh, as is Roma um, with that win. Napoli holds sixth, uh, leapfrogs Milan, uh, who, of course, didn't play. So we have to see how this is developing. Uh, Cagliari at the moment stays uh, at least uh, put, but, you know, uh, if the other games are played, this might quickly change. Um, Torino down to goal difference, but again... Uh, we have to see how, how it changes on the, on the bottom, none of these teams played. Um, if we go to the Super League in Greece, for once we don't have a new leader. However, we have a team that I think said goodbye to the title challenge in Fenerbahce with only playing a 2-2 in Antalya Sport. All the others won. Besiktas 2-1 at Alanya Sport. Terapson Sport wins 5-2 with Siva Sport with a 3-0 win of Ankara Gutsi. Uh, and Galatasaray doing the same thing over uh, GSK Ankara. And then Istanbul, Bajak Shehir gets the win late. So everyone uh, wins except Fe Fenerbahce. Alanya Sport probably is also now in that... Uh, region where it's a little bit doubtful. Besiktas probably can also not go in, but there are four teams within one point on top of the table in the Super League with Bajak Shia, Tarapsanspor, Galatasaray and Sivaspor. I still think this is Galatasaray's to win, but we have to see about that. And then let's finish in Greece, uh, where, you know, this was kind of all played together because it was uh, the last rounds of the Super League uh, before the playoff. And yeah, we have Xanti and Pauk um, Power having an early league, Santi equalizing. Power cannot find the win that allows Olympiakos to pull away even for a 2 0 at pa Panatolikos, uh, bottom of the table team. So that was expected. Um, well, that ends this roundup rather short. I am so mad about the scheduling in Serie A, but you know, for once, a short Serie A video. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a comment below if you have anything to say about all that mess or any of the games that I've been talking about. Fill me in if you can. Um, and yeah, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.